visual mods need to be stopped. Well, at least some of them. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be checking out some of my favorite visual mods in EU4. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. Now I think everyone knows what visual mods are or graphical mods in EU4. Basically, they're mods that only change the game the way it looks or change the looks of certain functions or aspects of the game without actually altering the base game gameplay experience. And today we're gonna be checking out a couple of my favorite ones that I have been using well since I've been playing EU4 or that I just think are really cool and are worth showing off and maybe you're gonna use them in your game too or maybe you're already using them. So first off we have probably my favorite mod for EU4 ever and I think I've been using this mod for so long now maybe a couple of years ever since I found out about it I have been using it all the time and it is featured in maybe 90% of my videos people ask me all the time what map mod I'm using this is graphical map improvements. So as you can see it features HD terrain textures more emphasized and better looking seasons you can notice the snow, you know, it gets kind of yellow in the summer and it gets kind of blue when it's winter. The water is darker in some areas, which of course represent the deeper parts of the oceans and it is generally more colorful. We can see all the parts that are not that deep and we can see the deeper parts. Basically, water is lighter around the islands. We have all the underwater terrain and this map is just a joy to look at. Not just for the water, but also the way that the colors of the nations look like, the thickness of the borders between countries you can really differentiate which country is which and i think it's definitely helpful for colorblind people to be able to see the border between nations more accurately as well at least uh, that's what i've heard people say shadows are also removed from terrain like in vanilla eu for this mountain right here you would be able to see a shadow on the other side of it i don't think that looks that good this mod doesn't have any shadows and i think it looks way better like that the font is thicker and more easily readable not just for nations but for provinces as well and the border between states is more clearly visible with this big dotted line surrounded by smaller lines and the borders between provinces are also more visible with this smaller dotted line with no outside lines and also the occupation lines so when rebels have occupied a province like over here for example they are much thicker than vanilla u4 and are way easier to see i do think this is the best graphics mod for u4 so graphical map improvements like i said i've been using it for so long and this mod is actually iron man compared that is exactly one of the reasons I use it because when I'm not making videos I'm playing for achievements and it has to be Iron Man compatible. Now this mod has several add-ons as well which you will be seeing on your screen right now. We have the terrain shadows add-on which basically adds terrain shadows back and this is pretty cool if you're into that. It does make the topography of the map more exaggerated I feel like. There's also a version for extended timeline if you're into playing extended timeline. There's the darker water extension for extended timeline there's the darker water extension for this base game mod there's also an extension which removes snow when it's winter so you know how you will be able to slightly see the snow peeking through the political map mode even that add-on removes that there's also a no snow but it brings back terrain shadows there's an add-on which returns vanilla borders so you won't be seeing the thick lines between countries actually that's one of my favorite features and there's also an add-on which features the vanilla fonts now these are all great great add-ons I mostly recommend playing it just as it is so no add-ons at all except maybe for the darker water add-on if that's your thing the darker water does look very good as you can see even by this little picture that's up on your screen and this mod is compatible with 1.31.4 this mod is always being updated like I said I've been playing it for years as soon as a new update drops it gets updated and I definitely recommend for you to play with graphical map improvements it will increase your enjoyment in EU4 by around 7 7.3% and 9 out of 10 U4 YouTubers agree. So, graphical map improvements, 5 stars. Let's move on. Next up, we have Bigger UI version 1.31.3. This is also one of my favorite mods, and I've been using it ever since I can remember. I think I first saw it when I was watching Arumba on Twitch. Come back to us, King. And he was using a mod similar to this, or maybe exactly this one. But it basically increases the size of all the menus that pop out in EU4. So when I click on the court tab right here, this is basically the size of all menus. When you open up the country view, all of them are this size. But here we can see the government tab. It's massive. 
all the way to the bottom you can see all those cultures mm -mm -mm. then you have the diplomacy view you can see everyone that hates you and all the nation's opinions of you in the economy tab well there isn't much to increase in here to be honest whoop need to disable war taxes in the trade view we can view all the trade notes that we know of basically and have access to there's nothing to expand in tech but in ideas if you're using a mod that gives you i don't know 16 idea groups instead of eight well guess what you can see all of them no need to scroll down but my favorite tab has got to be the missions i mean come on do you really want to see six missions instead of 20 I don't think so and look at all that real estate it's the same case in the policies and decisions you can scroll to your heart's desire instability you can see all the rebels that are gonna break your country because you just started playing and declared seven no cb wars in the religion screen you can see all the provinces that you're gonna be converting or not depending on your playstyle in the military tab you can see all your generals all your subjects this is helpful for playing colonial nations where you're gonna have 70,000 subjects and in the estates you can see all your estates and there's another mod bigger estate view which i'm not gonna get into basically this mod is a rework for all the menus peace dialogues too advisor choices releasing vassals sharing maps selling ships war goals aspects of church lots of awesome stuff like that this is another excellent mod that is iron man compatible so you won't have to worry about disabling it to get achievements although you will have to disable it if you're posting speedruns on speedrun.com i learned that the hard way don't make the same mistake i did but this is another excellent mod and it gets five stars from me next up we have stellar UI font the final of my three favorite mods that I've been using for forever and that I use in 99% of my videos basically there's not much to say here the font is from Stellaris but it looks so much better even looking at the outliner right here it's just so much more readable the colors pop more and the font is way better than the default font that u4 uses I don't know if this is Tryon or Tryon Pro the you know the fonts for u4 or if it's Times New Roman but this is one of my favorite mods stellaris ui you have to use it it will make your experience playing eu4 so much better now it doesn't feature everywhere for example when it says pause right here we don't have that font or the name of the country it's also a not in that font now it's not featured when you recruit mercs so hopefully that doesn't bug you too much as we can see right here and it's not featured in the states tab either in the macro builder well at least the names of the states so there are some areas where it's missing out on but it's honestly not a big deal and you should definitely also download this mod and it is also iron man compatible and that's stellaris ui font basically those are my three holy trinity holy grail mods that i don't play a single game of eu4 without so graphical map improvements or graphical improvements mod whatever you want to call it bigger ui 1.31.3 plus and stellaris ui font this is my third favorite mod and it gets another five stars from me now let's check out some of the other mods which i love but i don't play with them on Next we have Theatrum Orbis Terrarum for 130 plus another one of the best visual mods for EU4 probably ever although this isn't the original version it's pretty much the same one. Now Theatrum Orbis Terrarum translates to theater of the world and is considered to be the first true modern atlas created in 1570 by the Flemish cartographer Abraham Ortelius and this mod basically tries to bring that look and feel to EU4 and basically you can see what this mod looks like i'm sure a uh, lots of you have already seen it basically it's a sort of a genuine map feel for eu4 you can really get a sense of the unique art style when looking at it especially at the mountains various different provinces where there are trees the rivers the little different images of all the forts i really love those to be honest the default version doesn't have water so basically i mean it does have water it's just white and one of my favorite parts about this mod is the terra incognita as we can see right here this is basically it and another great thing is the fog of war i don't know how well you can see it but basically if i zoom in you can sort of notice these little lines that appear and disappear and it gets sort of brighter and it gets sort of darker and that's another really cool part about it now my favorite part about this mod is actually looking at it once you're zoomed out enough for you to not see terra incognita and for the names of the nations to show up and the font which is used is really fitting and really good looking in my opinion too 
on this distance is where the mod truly shines. We have these wonderful sort of neon borders between the countries, which are of course not pronounced at all, as opposed to the graphical map improvements mod, and the nations sort of seamlessly transition from one into the other. Here we can also see the pause banner, it's really cool as well, and the flags are different as well. They have sort of this cartoonish look to them, as we can see a lot more flat than regular EU4, and the colors are also a lot more saturated for example. But they do look really good and I'm actually a really big fan. I have also used this mod for a long period of time, swapping between it and graphical map improvements. Now one thing I don't actually like about this mod is that when you start zooming in and things start appearing, like the names of the provinces, and as you zoom in even more and more, the opacity of the countries sort of goes down. As you can see zoomed out, France has a lot more blue. But when I zoom in, the color desaturates and basically the political map mode becomes transparent. This is sort of similar to what happens, you know, in CK3 or Imperator, when you zoom in from political and when you zoom in all the way down, it's basically terrain. And I don't know, I may be in the minority here, but that's that's something I really don't like about CK3 and Imperator Rome. That's something I really don't like about this mod and when you have tons of nations like this without these neon borders to be honest and even with them it can be very hard to tell nations apart especially playing in regions like this like oh where am I you gotta go in here and float on this so your nation can start glowing but otherwise it's a really cool map. This mod also has add-ons similarly to graphical map improvements and these are the add-ons you can see them on your screen right now we have more opacity medium opacity and even more opacity. Now that's the one I like playing with when I play with this mod on even more opacity that sort of basically prevents this effect where nations become desaturated when you zoom into them. There's also water add-ons like blue water, deep blue water and dark water. All three of them are very cool to be honest. There's also dark borders where you can choose between nine different country border styles. That's very cool. I recommend going for the thick option if that's your thing. There's also dynamic borders where these province and state borders fade away when you zoom out so basically at this level you won't be seeing the provinces and states anymore and there's also some interface font add-ons as well as a completely flat map add-on which basically prevents you know terrain if you're not into seeing stuff like that sort of Victoria 2 style and there's also an add-on for random new world if you're into playing random new world but it's also one of the best visual mods for you for definitely and I'm sure a lot of players will agree with me I'm a huge fan of how the map looks and of all the flags and like I said I'm also a fan of how the castles look but overall I'm not a fan of how when you zoom in everything becomes desaturated I know that's just a personal thing but for that this mod gets four out of five stars for me with the add-on even more transparency it becomes five out of five stars next we have one of the more cursed mods on this list waifu universalis 0.31 i think it's called yeah waifu universalis it still is one of the more popular visual mods so let's see why everyone likes it so much here we are in the nation selection screen and uh well we have autoton yep autoton Maybe I shouldn't have included this one. <laughs> what do you guys think? And also we have the meme looks, of course. Why not? And the most blessed name in the game, Pope Sama. That's right. So basically, I think those are the only three nations that have been renamed in the game. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what this mod basically does is it changes the flags of all the nations to anime waifus. And it also changes advisor portraits and event portraits as well. You know, I always liked how Orat's flag has like a couple of anime waifus on it. I think all hordes should have more than one on them to be honest creators if you're listening give it a thought and this is what the flags look like in game we have naples right here of course all the waifus are the color of the nation that you're playing with we have naples right here they have a purple waifu it's sitting in front of the flag austria's one is pretty cool we have france right here with a lady liberty or something but that one looks really cool as well now funnily enough england does use a different flag in this mod so it doesn't use the you know quadrisection lions and whatever one it uses the cross of saint george with a red anime waifu in front of it and scotland also uses the you know the scots flag with the blue and white instead of the red lion on a yellow background i really like these two more and scotland's waifu seems to be wearing some traditional scottish clothing which is very cool to see so obviously a lot of attention and time has been put into this mod to make all the ones very specific to the nation you're playing with not just random ones recolored and put into oh uh well, I guess the Ottomans, Mamluks, and the Pope are not the only nations that have been remained. We have Horde Chan. You know, maybe these mod review videos. Maybe I should stop doing them. I don't know. 
But yeah, we have Horde Chan. So I guess that there are four renamed nations in the game. Horde Chan's anime waifu is pretty cool. Wind blowing in the hair and everything. And it does look nice. This mod may be cringy to some of you guys and maybe cool to the others. But I think we can all give credit to the creators. And even though it may be awful taste, it's great execution. That's Waifu Universalis 0.31 everyone. And I will give this mod four stars just because it's cursed. Next up, we have the Localized Nations mod. So basically what this mod does is it changes the names of the nations from English to what they were called in their native languages. Pretty cool and very immersive if I have to say so myself. That's really all this mod does. And if you're into role playing and if you want a little bit more immersiveness, you can check out this mod and use it. It is Iron Man compatible, so you will have no problems with achievements and it's definitely very cool looking maybe this should be an option in the base game in my opinion you know picking for the nations to be named what they called themselves similarly to how you can pick the provinces to not rename themselves when a nation conquers them i don't know why the name of england is still in english maybe the mod creators haven't gotten around to changing that yet but hopefully england will be changed soon too to their original name in their own language that's a joke by the way as far as i can see the entire world is changed of course i don't know all of the nation's names in their languages but going even over down here in southeast asia we can see that majapahit is mojopahit going down to south america we can see that the incan nations have had their names changed definitely check out this mod if you're into immersion Next up we have another mod which basically renames nations similar to the previous one. This one is called Dynamic Names and what it basically does is renames nations based on their cultures, religions, government rank and stuff like that based on the land they control. It's actually a really cool mod so even from here you can take a look. For example we have the Ottoman Sultanate so it tells you what kind of government type they have. The Principality of Wallachia and the Principality of Moldova. That tells you their government rank basically. We have the Kingdom of Hungary, Archduchy of Austria, Kingdom of England, Crown of Castile, Kingdom of Aragon. This is for empires, the, the Timurid Empire some emirates here in arabia federations as well we have great ming mongol horde canates in japan of course these are all clans whereas ashikaga is the shogunate and for example here's something else i've annexed all of france as england and now we have a decision right here update country name and we can update our name basically and when we click this it changes to the english empire now i'm the ottomans i have annexed byzantium and i will also update my name and we get changed to the Ottoman Empire. This is a really fun mod and it really does bring immersion to the game. I really wish the base game U4 was like this and not every country being named like it is. You know, you could still use this mod. The only thing is this mod is not Iron Man compatible. So that's the only downside to this mod. But if you don't play Iron Man, definitely go for this mod. I'm gonna have to give it five out of five stars. I can't really give it four out of five since it being not Iron Man compatible isn't the creator's fault. But basically it's the way that eu4 works next up we have fast universalis and as the name suggests it's basically a mod that tones the graphics way down so it will run better on potato pcs it simplifies the ocean and rivers to have no effects most 3d objects are removed so obviously you can't see the city sprawl you can't see any trees or I guess you can see trees, but you should disable that. There are fast fog of war and snow effects. Heavy unit models are changed to simple arrows and lots of other stuff like that that basically make the game run faster. So if any of you guys have some bad PCs or if it just doesn't run well on your PC, no matter how good it is, you can try out fast universalis and it definitely will bring a performance boost to your game it is iron man compatible so no worries there you can still go for your achievements and there are several recommendations posted by the mod creator which you can see on your screen right now basically some effects that you should also disable or enable while running this mod for even better performance but yeah it's a visual mod that doesn't look that good but it's also a mod that will increase your performance at the expense of good visuals so if you're having trouble running the game go for it i give this mod five out of five stars there are lots of u4 players with bad pcs this will help 
help you play. Next up we have Toaster Universalis. It's similar to Fast Universalis, the previous mod which improves performance on not so good PCs but this mod takes even more out of the graphics and fancy stuff out of the game. Of course if you want to maximize the performance you're gonna get you're gonna want to disable rivers, you're gonna want to disable trees, nation borders, province borders, state borders. You can't even see the units, you can't even see the capitals of nations, no sprawl, no castles, nothing like that. No, you know, little caravans traveling along the trade nodes. I'm sure even the wildlife is disabled. I know there's an eagle over Alexandria and I can't seem to see it. But yeah, I mean, the name speaks for itself. Toaster Universalis. And I heard a joke that this mod will make U4 run on your phone. This is the second of the mods which greatly, greatly improve performance for any kinds of PCs. And trust me, get Toaster Universalis. Disable all the fancy stuff in the graphics. Even the terrain is gray by default. There's no water. Water, it's just blue like someone clicked fill on paint it will improve performance significantly so if your PC is not so good if you're playing on a laptop from 2012 get this mod trust me it's gonna improve your gameplay experience it's not gonna look very good especially if you disable rivers and borders and names and units and everything at least it's gonna run and you're gonna be able to play so that's toaster universalis the second of our performance improvement mods you can check out fast universalis and toaster universalis as well Maybe one of them will give you better performance, but either way, definitely check it out. This mod also gets 5 out of 5 stars from me because, well, everyone deserves to play. Next up, we have Minimalist Map Mod. Now, this may seem familiar to a bunch of you guys. If you played Victoria 2, this map mod will be familiar to you. And if you're a fan of that art style, you're gonna love this one. Essentially, it brings the way the Victoria 2 map looks into EU4, and honestly, I love it. I just recently discovered this map mod while browsing the Steam workshop and I was like what's minimalist map mod I initially thought it was another one of those fast universalis type mods which improves performance you know minimalist but it's actually a very very nice visual map mod that makes EU4 look like Victoria 2 in essence we have the map you know all the folds all the quadrants or sectors whatever they're called it's very flat the colors are sort of desaturated but they differentiate very well from themselves and you can easily tell nations apart well at least from this distance at a certain level of being zoomed out you can't actually see the province borders and the state borders which makes this map mod look very clean from this level of being zoomed out and once you zoom in a little bit they start appearing as you can see we can barely see the states right now i zoom in once again we can see the states and the the provinces very nicely and if we zoom in even more the rivers and the cities start showing up and it looks awesome even from this close zoomed in we have this nice thin black line dividing nations a slightly faded black line dividing states and an even thinner faded black line dividing areas and this mod also makes the map a lot more flat there still is terrain of course we can notice the terrain right here but it's way more flat than vanilla u4 or for example graphical map improvements all the mountains are basically squished right into the ground but it looks very good from every level of being zoomed in or out. That's all that's changed. Just the map. No flags. No nothing like that. But either way, I really like how this mod looks like. And I'm sure you guys will like it too. It's definitely a very classic art style. Very Victoria 2 art style. Even the uncolonized provinces look really good. We have some rocks and trees and mountains right here. And everything looks really good. Even the water. We can also notice the deeper areas of the ocean. Which are darker versus the shallower ones. Which are lighter. Similarly to gravity graphical map improvements and I really like how this mod looks like. So if you're a fan of Victoria 2 or if you just like the way this mod looks check it out definitely. This mod gets a 5 out of 5 stars from me. I may be biased because I really like this map style but 5 out of 5 stars definitely. And those are pretty much my favorite visual mods. Like I said my holy trinity of mods that I always use in every single video and every single time I play are graphical map improvements, bigger UI 1.31.3 plus and still Loris UI font. Those mods are always active for me and they are my favorite but I also showcased some other mods which I really like and which I think you guys will really enjoy as well and you can definitely find a graphical mod out there that is for you and that you are gonna enjoy even if I didn't showcase it in today's video and you should definitely check out at least one of these mods. These are all updated for 1.31 plus. They will all work for you and I will have the links for all of these mods in the description below and you can try them out for 
yourselves and decide which one looks best for you, which one runs the best for you, and which one you like the most. What are your guys' favorite visual mods for you for? And what are some other mods that I should showcase in these videos? Leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing since only 12% of you are subscribed. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.